<laughs> no. No, 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 no. Hello everybody and welcome to Skirt Garage. My name is Connor and I'm excited having the channel today because I'm doing another DIY. And this DIY is gonna be on the car behind me, a 2008 Lexus ISF, but this will also work for any RCF or GSF that has the same eight-speed transmission that's in this car. What I'm gonna be doing is a fluid and a filter change on the transmission, which is important because I do believe that the maintenance interval for this is every 60,000 miles. It can be sooner if you're flogging the car, if you're tracking it or whatever the case may be. I'm at 120,000 miles and I really think it's time to do it uh, because I don't have any proof that the previous owner before me had done it at 60,000 miles. So just to cover my bases, I went ahead and did it. And as you can tell by the opening clip, it was a very messy job. Top three messiest jobs I've ever done on any car project ever so much so that I actually had to throw away the clothes I was using. So hopefully today, when I do this DIY for you guys, it can A, make it really easy because I'll provide all the equipment that you'll need in the description box below. Go ahead and check that out. I will also give you guys diagrams and show you exactly what goes where with the appropriate torque spec. So hopefully uh, in doing so, you guys won't get messy and you can complete this job very quickly. I don't know if I've already said it or not, it took me two hours with the big cleanup and spill that happened. If you don't have that happen to you, you might be able to get it done in 45 minutes to an hour. So with that guys, I think you know everything you need and I think we are ready to get this job done. Before you start though, uh, I recommend putting a mat down. Getting a mat, covering your bases with you know big open catch cans and stuff like that because uh, transmission fluid is far less viscous than regular oil. So when it, when it drops, it will splatter all over you and your garage. So just keep that in mind before we get started here. And uh, yeah, now it's time to go ahead and move to the DIY and also show you the products that you'll need to get it done. So with that, let's get started. Okay guys, let me quickly show you some of the parts that you will need to get this job done. Uh, like I said, we are going to be doing a full flush and filter removal. And so you're gonna need a bit of uh, oil here. You're gonna need about six uh, liters of it. Another thing that you will need is a pump to be able to pump all this back into the transmission. I was told you're also gonna need a shallow socket, 24 millimeters, so I got one. These right here are the crush washers that hold up the lower pan to the transmission. This is a O-ring that comes with the new filter as it goes on to the car, and this is the filter. I was told that, again, this is the same quality as the original one that comes on the car. So yeah, guys, now we're ready to go ahead and take off the underbelly transmission pan and get this whole process going. So let's do it. Okay, first thing we're going to do is remove this transmission pan. It looks like there's 10 millimeter bolts all throughout this thing. So let's get it off. All right, this is the first look at the pan. And first thing you notice is that it looks pretty good. There's no leaking going on down here, which is obviously very nice. Okay, at some point we're gonna have to take this bar off, so we might as well put some PB Blaster on these oxidized looking bolts now. And uh, you know, as we get working and draining everything else, we can get those off. Okay, so pretty simply just remove these two 14 millimeter bolts. Okay, this is off. It's a 14 millimeter. What I used was a 14 millimeter to hold it and another 14 millimeter to uh, twist it off. Once I did one side, I just uh, swung it over here and it's kind of hanging out. Now we're going to 
access the fill plug and make sure that we can open it up. Once we have it open, then we're gonna take this off. Okay, now you're gonna need your short socket 24 millimeter bolt. I had a larger 24, but with the room available, it just does not fit. Once we know that that can come off, we can now start to drain the lower drain bolt on the transmission housing. You can see here it's pretty brown. Uh, I think this might have been changed once, but uh, still very, very dark. Okay, with the entire thing drained, we can put the bolt back and go ahead and give that a little clean. And now we can start to remove some of the bolts that hold the pan onto the transmission housing. Okay, I've taken out majority of the 10 millimeter bolts. The only ones that are left is this one right here and the far end one right there. So I'm gonna take that one off last. I'm gonna take this one off right now, brace it, and then let any contents that remain fall into that. Or so that was the plan. I'm actually gonna let you watch this in real time so you can see just how big of a disaster it was. The pan is on there pretty good, so you kinda of have to pry it off, and that's eventually what led to my downfall. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, saying no a whole bunch of times didn't help anything. My clothes were ruined. But anyway, now we're going to remove the filter. There are four bolts. You're gonna remove those and have a pan ready because there's still a good bit of transmission fluid left once you pry this off. Okay, now you can take a look at the new transmission filter. It comes with a new O-ring, so use some oil and lubricate that so it goes in a little bit easier. There are just four bolts, so what we're gonna do now is actually place it back up in there, and you wanna make sure that you can feel it kinda of snap into place. Uh, there is an O-ring that kinda of holds it in place, so make sure that the old one is out and your new one has fit snug in there. Then take the four millimeter bolts and tighten them to eight foot pounds. All right, now back to the transmission pan. I want you to remove the three magnets on the bottom of it and clean them. I use brake cleaner to really degrease them and you can go ahead and put them back into their place. Once you're done, you can remove the old gasket uh, in between the pan and the transmission. You can throw that away because you no longer need it. Now, this is really important. Take some brake cleaner and clean the entire rim all the way around the pan and make sure that it's ready to be cleaned so that the new gasket can mate very nicely to the transmission once again. All right, now replace the bolt sleeves in the new gasket and lay it out and gently apply pressure along all sides of the gasket and make sure that there is no gaps or weird spots where it's not completely seated. Before you bolt down the pan back to the transmission, use some more of that brake cleaner and clean the surface very, very well. This is really important to make sure they don't get any leaks or uh, problems down the road. Now, be very careful not to move the gasket around, but go ahead and apply a couple bolts into the transmission and kind of let it hang until you can get all the bolts in place and start to snug everything down. Torque these bolts to 15 foot-pounds. Okay, here is the world standard fill plug and it has this little O-ring on it. This is the O-ring I had you guys get. So we will replace this and uh, we'll start filling this up. Okay, now it's time to pump the new automatic transfluid in. I went ahead and pumped in six bottles or just about 
call it five and three fourths because generally this job will take about five but I'd rather have too much and then drain out what I don't need than have too little and wonder if I need to add a full bottle or just a little bit more. Okay guys, I have a little bit of explaining to do here. Once you fill up the transmission, you're, you're supposed to overfill it because there's a separate process where you can unscrew the overfill uh, drain. And essentially it, what, what that does is once your car is up to operating temperature, any of the excess fluid will drain out and it'll keep all the necessary fluid for the transmission to function. And so what you do is you overfill it a little bit. I think you need five quarts and I put in five and three fourths quarts to make sure that everything would have enough. And now to, to do the overfill uh, reduction, to get all that out, there's a specific method if you have TechStream, which is like the software for Toyota and Lexus. I don't have that. And it was really difficult for me to make that work. And so I ended up going on YouTube like you are now and I found another video where a gentleman used a heat gun to measure the temperature of the lower transmission pan. And he used that in order to guesstimate the temperature of the uh, automatic transmission fluid. The working idea is that if the pan is 95 degrees, then at least the fluid inside is a few degrees hotter. In order to do this procedure, the fluid has to be between 95 and 110 degrees. And so I did the same thing. I turned my car on with my six or you know, five and three fourths quarts or liters, whatever it was, of a fluid. And I you know, waited, I kept gunning it until it got to between 95 and 100. And then I um, unscrewed the overfill uh, plug and out came, I don't know, two or three pints, not very much. And after all that came out, I simply waited till it was done coming out, like it was a very slow trickle. And then I put the overfill plug back into 15 foot pounds and that was that. After I finished that up, I took the car around the block. The thing drove a lot smoother, which I'm really happy to report. Plus the, uh, I guess the, the shift timing was a little bit more appropriate as well. I think that the, the car's ECU responded a little bit quicker with the transmission, which I thought was really nice. And that's part of the whole reason why I did this. So anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for us at Skirt Garage. I really hope you have appreciated this video. If you have, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and a positive comment below. Love you guys, have a great day, and we will see you on the next video. Peace.